Welcome to Truth Seekers, a podcast that challenges the false corporate narrative underlying social injustice and the erosion of democracy. Today's moment of truth examines the false promise of employer-provided health coverage. Is it true, as many Republican and Democratic congressional friends of commercial health insurance say, that 180 million liked their employer-provided coverage and would not want to give it up. Listen to presidential candidates, former Congressman John Delaney and Senator Michael Bennett. Medicare for all may sound good, but it's actually not good policy, nor is it good politics. I'm telling you. Truth check. I think we'd be much better off with a bill like the one I have with Tim Kaine right. called Medicare X that creates a public option. It, it helps finish the work of Obamacare. Right. And it says to America, if you want to be in a public plan, you can choose to be in a public plan. If you want to keep your insurance, you can yeah. keep your insurance. Back up. Many Congress members receive large contributions from the health industrial complex, as reported on OpenSecrets.org. At best, employer-provided coverage is unreliable. An employer may change plans, lay you off, or the private insurer may drop its plan at any time. Every year, insurers and employers shift more of the cost of care to workers in the form of premiums, co-pays, and deductibles, leaving more in the ranks of the underinsured, with coverage they cannot use because they cannot afford high out-of-pocket costs that are required before coverage will kick in. The Commonwealth Fund reports increasing rates of underinsurance, 28% of U.S. adults with employer-provided coverage were underinsured in 2018, an increase from 20% four years earlier. Commercial insurance plans shrink their provider networks, maintaining skinny networks, reducing choice of doctors and hospitals, and leaving employees to pay costs for out-of-network doctors. Commercial insurers also change their drug formularies at will, eliminating coverage for some drugs. The president and CEO of the National Business Group on Health calls the rise of health benefit costs unsustainable. Health costs are rising at two times the rate of wage increases and three times that of general inflation. As costs continue to rise, employers cut back on covered benefits. In fact, the percentage of employer-provided coverage is declining from 67.7% in 2000 to 57% in 2017, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. Here's Bernie Sanders introducing Richard Master, CEO and founder of MCS Industries. The Richard Master, who is the CEO and founder of MCS Industries, a $200 million a year company in eastern Pennsylvania, who's going to tell us why, as a businessman, he understands that the future of this country rests with Medicare for All. Every year at renewal time, my company faces double-digit increases in health care premiums. So I took a deep dive into the health care insurance industry in the United States, and I didn't like what I found. It is a totally unnecessary middleman whose very existence costs businesses a fortune and adds no value. Other industrialized countries get better health results as at half the price. The way we finance health care keeps wages flat, discourages businesses from hiring full-time employees, and causes discrimination against employees in their 50s and 60s. And growing health care costs pose a real existential threat to the American economy. Warren Buffett was right. 
Medical costs are the tapeworm of American economic competitiveness. It is true that multiple commercial and small risk pool insurers provide fragmented coverage with higher administrative costs that are not financially sustainable and undermine the U.S. economy. This has been a moment of truth about the false promise of employer-provided health coverage. Truth Seekers, produced at Denver Open Media. Music mix by Tim Johnson. Underwriting by Healthcare for All Colorado Foundation. This is Michelle Swenson, producer of Truth Seekers Podcast.